hybrid editing made easy. This hybrid photography vlog post is brought to you by ProShow. Photodex.com. I'm Carol, and basically, I'm just really, really new to the video portion of being a hybrid photographer. And those of you who have seen my posts before really know how new I am to this whole video thing. And I'm loving it. I'm also realizing just how uneducated I am. And although I could have done what my mom taught me, look it up, I didn't. I am fortunate and blessed to have friends in high places. And one of them is Mark Toll, who's with me today. And Mark, um, in addition to working for Panasonic, is a hybrid hero and writes uh, posts and vlogs posts for discovermirrorless.com, like I do. Because of his um, most awesome association with Panasonic, and I think he'll tell you himself, he's not here for Panasonic, he's here as Mark, but he's got the background and the education in the GH3, all of it, including all the video stuff, and so I kind of went to him and said, Help! <laughs> really, I did. Um, and it was a, at a time when I was like running out the door to shoot something in the dark and it was going to be horrible. And I said, help me get through this. And then let's sit down and help me understand so I don't have to make this call every time I have a new situation. I just need to get it. And I'm blessed. Mark said yes. So I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about himself. And then we're going to start digging into video on the GH3. Hi, thanks, Carol. Uh, obviously, I'm Mark, and I'm, I work for Panasonic. That's my main job. I uh, work in Portland, Oregon. I do uh, sales support for cameras, and I'm kind of the camera expert out here in this part of the world. Um, I was a professional photographer for years, worked in photo labs, managed photo labs for years, so I've got a lot of photo experience. Uh, I've been doing video for, oh, about a year and a half or two years, not a tremendously long time, and um, using the GH3. And again, as Carol said, I work for Panasonic, but what I say is not, um, let's not say authorized by Panasonic, but it's not cleared by Panasonic, or so if I, if there's a detail that's slightly off, don't blame them, write me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, and so with that, we're going to dig into all things video. Hey, hey. we're back here um, with Mark Toll again. Hi. And today, uh, we're going to play around a bit with a very specific piece of the video menu, and that's the recording modes. There are three of them. And the only thing I know right now are a couple of recipes that were taught to me by people way smarter than me. And that's okay, it's gotten me by, but now I, I'm really ready to understand the other ways to set up video and why I might use them and when. And so, of course, I contacted the expert, that being Mark Toll, and he's going to jump on now and talk to us about, let's see if I can, can I get them up there so you can see them? I've got my menu, oh, now I'm getting re the glare going from the light that I have on. Basically, there's AVCHD, MP4, and MOV. And I don't know why I would use anything other than AVCHD, which are the recipes that I have. And so, Mark, if you could take it away and tell me what those three all are and when I would use what. Definitely. Okay. And these modes are available in... Um all of the video settings on the camera, whether it's the programmable, the intelligent auto, or here, okay, or in the, we're in the custom mode now. Okay, so they apply to all three of those modes. So let's talk first about the MP4. Let's start at the bottom, okay? MP4 is probably the um, least desirable of the formats. It's the most compressed. Um, the sound quality isn't very high on MP4. The video quality is okay. Um, it, um, it's just not going to give you the depth of color, the depth of sound, uh, and it's going to give you more compression, so it probably won't be as sharp. It's meant for uh, online use, phone use, iPad use. So I wouldn't say never use it, but keep in mind that if, we can if it's worth it to relate this to, let's say, still photography, I think of this as like shooting a um, medium to low quality JPEG. I wouldn't do it 
even though a lot of times when you shoot and you upload your stuff to Vimeo or especially YouTube, they're lowering it to a quality that isn't much better than MP4. Okay, But I like to have the file in a better quality to begin with. So I don't shoot an MP4. I just don't see the reason for it. I'm a person who wants the highest quality that I can get from the camera, even if my current final result is to have it be lowered in quality, let's say when I upload it to, to, to Vimeo. What if later on I want to do something with it? So, so my feeling would be if you, you get the most per card, so if that's important, let's say you're somewhere and you don't have much card space, MP4 gives you the most per card, it's the most compressed. A lot of times sound doesn't matter all that much, especially if we're doing a situation like you and I are doing here where it's just voice. You wouldn't really notice the difference. So again, if you want, if you don't care that it's not the highest quality, and um, the sound isn't tremendously important, MP4 is great. Doesn't take up much computer space. Every program pretty much will work with it. So that's a good thing about it too. Okay. So let's move up. The next one up in line, not on the menu. They don't go in this direction on the menu. The next one up in quality is AVCHD. Okay. The AVCHD format was created a few years ago for Blu-ray discs. So let's say, oh, I don't know, five or six years ago, when what people were mostly doing with video was showing it on a TV or burning it to a disc, they had to come up with a standard that would allow a 1080p camera to burn its, and these were video cameras mostly in that days, to burn its file to a Blu-ray disc or a DVD that could be played on a Blu-ray player at 1080p. Now, the, the, the part of the problem with ABCHD, the beauty of it is it works great on a TV. So it gives you a picture that looks just like you're, you're watching a TV show. Okay, so um, part of, part of the, the, I would call it the problem with ABCHD is it takes a lot of computer power to process it. A lot of, some programs don't handle it that well. And there's not that much of a need for ABCHD anymore because people aren't burning discs. I mean, that is almost a thing of the past now. So the, the MOV format, which has been added to the GH3, and it's the choice that you pointed out before, okay? So the MOV format is the format that I've started to shoot in. And the reason for that is, is the MOV format allows for better, it gives better compression, so you get less artifacts, less problems. It gives you a higher bit rate, okay? And so bit rate is very important. So think of M MPEGs or, or the uh, MP4s give you the least megabit rate, okay? AVCHD is next, and Move gives you the best. Basically what megabit rate is, the amount of data that can be taken from the sensor and written to the card. So you're talking about better motion, better color, better compression. So Move is going to be the best format. And now within the Move format, the MOV format, you have two different types. You have what's called, let me just make sure what they call it here, um, the MOV. Oh, we can go, that, that'd be in the next menu, actually, with the quality settings. So if we want to jump down there, we could, uh, we could talk about that next. But I started this, so I would, I would, well, I would, just be, I would, I would encourage you, because you, you were like me, you've been shooting an ABCHD for a long time, because that's the best our GH2s did is to try the move format before you go out and shoot it and just make sure your software works with it correctly and, and, and you're happy with it. But I think you will be. I don't think you'll see a big, a big difference in your processing, except you'll like, it. You'll like the quality better. Okay. However, isn't there um, a little price to pay for that quality and that the file is actually quite a bit bigger than the AVCHD file? It depends on the, the quality settings you choose in the next... Okay. Setting so there's yeah. other settings that will that will impinge on that. Yes. Well, then but, let's uh, just leave it. Go ahead. Look, I was going to say, well, then maybe we should just leave this part at this, where we now understand that the the MP4 is going to give you the the lowest quality but the smallest file, right? Yes. All the way up to the MOV, which is going to give you the best quality at the price of a larger file. Exactly. Depending on how you set it. Yes. Um, and so, since I'm like you, even if I'm shooting something that I intend to play back only on perhaps even small screens, mm -hmm. iPhones, uh, tablets, maybe a computer, I still like to have the highest quality because you never know where a piece of that may go later. Exactly. 
And, yes. it, and you, you can't ratchet the quality up after you shoot it. You've got to shoot it in that quality. Exactly. But someday, I mean, most of what we watch on the computer now is 720p, but someday it's going to be 1080p or higher. And right. Get, and so shooting at that just makes sense. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. Well, we'll save the complicated settings that go with each of those because they each have their own set of settings right. for a different discussion. Okay. And for today, just bless our lucky stars that we now get the difference between those three modes. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome, Carol. Hybrid editing made easy. This hybrid photography vlog post is brought to you by ProShow. Photodex.com.